Yeah, so here we are near Sedona in one of our favorite camping spots. And I found another couple that I want to introduce to you with an amazing school bus. So let's go check it out. Look at that thing. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm here with Jeff and um, Megan. Yeah. And uh, their amazing bus conversion. So we're gonna get all the details in a tour. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Chris. How's your day going? Excellent. So, uh, I found you here outside of Camp Verde, um, one of our favorite camping spots. And I saw your bus and I was amazed. And uh, yeah, thank you for, um, you know, showing it to us and, uh, and telling us about it. Well, you're welcome. I always uh, enjoy taking the time to do a walk around and show people what I've built and uh, love speaking about it. So yeah so what what's this bus what's the model and year well, and stuff it's a 1999 slash 2000 international 3800 uh with a bluebird body on it and when we bought it it had about 177,000 miles on it. it's got an international 7.3 liter v8 and it has a four-speed automatic which is an allison at 545 and that's a diesel engine right yeah you also have a Jeep there that you're towing. Yes. And then, then you set up this uh, improvised awning, which actually looks really nice. Yeah, I, I like to camp a lot. I used to camp quite a bit when I was younger. So uh, this was part of the uh, part of the plan was to be able to go off gridding and be at places like this and enjoy them. So it just was a natural fit. And not knowing what we wanted to do for an awning system yet, we figured this was quick, fast, easy, and familiar, so and it works very well. Yeah, it looks perfect. It's very cozy. And then you, I assume you have dogs? Yes, we do. We travel with our dog fence, which allows us to have some enclosed space no matter where we are, so they can be outside. Looks very nice. And then look at this view. I mean, can't beat that, huh? All right, so, well, what else is there to tell? I see a generator there. Yeah, so uh, I'd be happy to do a walk around on the outside mm -hmm. with you. Uh, we do carry a generator. We only really use it for supplemental power in the evening because we have solar. We have a thousand watts of solar on the roof. Did all the work on the bus myself uh, with uh, just a tiny little bit of help from my father-in-law doing the subfloor. We sanded and painted the bus actually in quartzite last year using Eco's house paints. My wife has chemical sensitivities, so a lot of what we did with the bus, we did specifically because we couldn't get a regular RV. On the outside, we have the standard bus battery box. I have a tractor supply box, which contains my house batteries. I have a 12 gallon gas electric hot water heater. On days like today, when the sun is shining after my batteries are up, I'll flip the breaker on on the electric hot water heater and saves us a little propane. It's a great way to use the excess power we get from the yeah. sky. This is really uh, well built there. It looks like it almost came with the bus. Well, I appreciate that because that's my first experience cutting sheet metal. Oh, well, it looks good to me. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So behind that, underneath, we have our 70 gallon freshwater tank. And then behind the rear axle, we have 70 gallon gray tank. Um, we probably have one of the biggest bedrooms of most of the school buses I've seen. Oh, nice. So, it's almost like a full walk around. It's, it's a half walk around. Oh man, I can already see how beautiful is this. Thank you. You see the emergency exit signs. Yeah. Things that we didn't change because we didn't want to yet. Right. And we weren't quite sure what we wanted to do, but it's a school bus and we wanted to be reminded that we're in a school bus. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's kind of fun. We have a WeBoost mobile cell phone repeater. We have two more boxes. The uh, rear box has all of my bus supplies. Everything I use to build this bus, with the exception of a compound miter saw, I have with me today. Would you like to step inside? Yes. Can't wait to see this. Oh yes, look at that, even plants. Yeah, my wife absolutely loves house plants and she really wanted needed space for that. So, you'll notice we have a lot of plants spread out throughout the bus. Oh my goodness, <laughs> look at this. It's a house. <laughs> so, we were shooting for kind of like the interior of a boat cabin. 
My goodness, even the washer dryer. Uh, just a washing machine. Oh, okay. We, we line dry everything. So that's a standard 24 inch uh, GE apartment washing machine. And there's the aforementioned fridge. That is an amazing fridge, particularly in converted space. Thank you. Yeah, it, if you can believe, came in through the front door pretty easily. My wife and I actually were the ones who put it in here. But we just recently this summer finished putting drawer fronts on uh, cabinetry. Got my butcher block built. Um, unfortunately, going to have to redo my concrete countertop. Well, I mean, it looks absolutely stunning. The, even the countertop, it looks kind of rustic. It, I like it. It, it was our first attempt. Neither Megan nor I or anybody else that we had been able to work with had ever built a concrete countertop. So this was our first go. And uh, I, I made the unfortunate error, if you notice, of making my form, the opening on the form, was mm -hmm. exactly the right size. Which, when you're making a concrete countertop, you don't want the form to be exactly, you don't want the opening to be the right size. You yeah. It to be just every, yeah. So, I have to remake that, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I mean, it looks fine to me, and then okay. just like the general vibe here is very much like, um, like a tiny house. Yeah, that's exactly what we were shooting for. Our first, uh, our, our first thoughts when we realized we were going to sell our four bedroom house and move into something tiny and become minimalists were of oh, building a yurt and then possibly building a stick built tiny. But then that yeah. rapidly moved into moving into a shipping container. Uh huh. Well, once we thought about shipping containers, the school bus was the natural next move. My wife and I like to travel. She's traveled a lot more extensively than I have. Right. And, you know, we weren't going to be able to simply because of her chemical sensitivity. So we needed a place where we had our own bathroom, had our own shower, our own complete everything in order to be able to travel. Yeah, yeah. So this was the solution. I like also your way of like doing cabinetry. Instead of enclosing it all in, it's just open and it has like a lip where things don't fall out. And it actually looks very nice. Thank you. We'd seen it a couple of times in a couple of other builds that my wife admired because she was responsible for laying out the floor plan. I asked her just to lay out the floor plan in, a, in the most efficient way that she wanted to. And then I would build all the underpinnings and make sure that all the utilities and mechanical stuff under the hood worked. Right. So uh, I, I'm really incredibly pleased. The, the open cabinetry was actually her design choice. Uh, I, I've grown to really like it. That's amazing. And then the, the stove. Yeah. That looks also very uh, professional. Yeah, this is actually a uh, three burner marine stove by a company called Dickinson. It's a great little stove. Uh, we've used the oven and the burners. It works great. Very first thing that I had my wife make me in there was uh, cupcakes. Mm -hmm. And then I see the Berkey water filter there yes. nicely out of the way. That's also like a, a design yeah. I haven't seen yet where elevated. Yeah, and I strap it in and that's out of the way. It's not sitting on the counter. Nope. We needed some place to put it because I think that this is absolutely an essential piece of mm -hmm. the uh, full-time RVers or any, if you're even part-timing RVing. Right. I don't make any money from Berkey at all, but honestly, it, you could pour pond water in there and drink out of it. It's incredible. A lot of people swear by it. And then yeah. I also like your knife rack over there. Thank you. I, I assume for driving, you probably take those off, huh? You know... <laughs> Oh, sometimes and you have them. <laughs> if you look straight forward, you'll see where the passenger seats are. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, actually, I had this funny conversation. I, I'm trying to remember if it was with Mike or not. Anyways, the knife rack. No, it was with Dean, a uh, gentleman who owns the schoolie. So the knife rack, well, because he's got axes up on his uh -huh. wall, if you remember it inside his rig. They don't actually go anywhere. What they tend to do, if they do anything at all, is they tend to vibrate down. Uh -huh. So I've never had to stop anywhere near so fast as anything has ever actually fallen forward. Yet. Right. I, I assume if you hit something so hard that they would come flying, you had we, other we, problems. We have other problems to worry about. <laughs> Correct. Okay, but yeah, that's nice. They're out of the way. So, and then beautiful floors. Thank you. They're, everything is maple. So the ceiling, the cabinetry, and the floor is uh, and a good component of the walls and stuff are all maple. I built all the cabinetry. All of these drawers are on full length slide out shelves. Mm -hmm. So I mean we have pretty much everything in our kitchen. I mean this is our storage. We have storage for a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. That <laughs> That's an amazing pantry. So if you want to come this way, uh, we have a very nice large closet. We don't have our curtain or doors on it yet. We've been working on it slowly trying to figure out exactly how we want it finished but 
It works really quite well, but that's everything we own. So uh, here's my instrumentation and control panels. I also added, uh, extended some DC distribution to this side, and uh, that's where my Wii Boost is. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So my Wii Boost mounted to the good, wall. good accessible. Yeah. Just in case you need to fix something. Yep, and I also have, so from my main electrical panel, I have both DC and AC. I have spare wiring going over in conduit. So I used yep. to be a phone guy. Okay. I like having spare stuff. <laughs> okay. Now it's so, the bathroom. Yeah, so we have wall fabric on here. This was just an experiment. They make this in much heavier canvas, and uh, we're going to replace that because we weren't sure what we wanted to do with yeah. that. Because the walls, again, you know, trying to figure out how to finish off the interior walls without adding too much weight. Yeah. It's kind of a challenge, and maple weighs quite a bit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the added thickness of the wall would kind of eat into the hallway. And yeah. When you're in a tiny space, it really, all those little extra portions of an inch matter. Yeah, that's a good idea. So okay. we <coughs> have our bathroom in here. We yeah, have a nature's head. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, sink and, you know, all storage, everything. Oh, that's animated. beautiful. Look Thank at you. that. Not quite finished yet. We're going to put in some, uh, you know, the metal grill work like I have underneath my bench there in the front. We're going to do some of that along the top, and it helps with airflow. Yeah. We're going to do the same here. So if you keep coming backwards, rearwards. Oh, there's a bathtub. <laughs> yeah, we have a 100-gallon stock tank that's uh, basically big enough for a bathtub and shower for two. Nice. Well, again, with my wife's needs, uh, we had to have a way where we had our own private everything. Private yep. bath, private yep. shower. Yeah, and as you can see, I mean, there's plenty of room. Oh, man, this is beautiful. So, yeah, uh, plenty of room for me to stand up in uh, back yeah. of the bedroom. And we have a little dog bed there for uh, yeah. our large dog, Toffee. And Hazel sleeps in her bed or she sleeps on the foot of our bed. Mm -hmm. I love the lighting. It's great, it's isn't so it? so cute. I, I, we started finishing, if you notice, the tone on the wood changes right about where mm -hmm. you're standing. So we finish with hemp oil. Okay. Because it's safe for my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really, I like the, the light golden that it gives it. I mean, everything it touches. So. And I love the plants, of course. Thank you. We got some plants. We keep them in the shower, though, in the tub. Yeah. So that's... That's where everything goes when we travel. So mm -hmm. we, we put stuff in the tub for travel. So I, I have two fans also. Fantastic fan. Yep, these are the Max Airs. Okay. Do they have, like, remotes? No. Okay. These are these are the bottom of the line three speed models and uh -huh. they work just great. And then you have a workstation over there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the computer's underneath, but uh, laptop, and yeah. I can just connect that to my TV. Right. We have a Blu-ray player, so so uh -huh. the couch, watch TV, and when I need yeah. to surf the internet or work, that's where I sit. So you use the computer screen also as like TV entertainment yeah. kind of thing, yeah? Yeah, actually it is a TV. Okay. So it has a TV tuner in it. If I were to get a TV antenna, I could yeah, get a yeah. podcast or bring cable into it. By the way, I, I cannot stand up in here, but you can and your yes. wife can too, so it's perfect. Yes, we didn't have to raise the roof, so that would have been an expense that a lot of folks have to incur when they yeah, want to yeah, move yeah. into a bus, unless they're my height or so. Right. And we looked at a number of different buses, and as I mentioned, the nice thing about the Bluebird was that it gave an extra two inches, which oh, yeah. I don't really need for the center because I'm only five foot nine. But when I'm in the bedroom, right, standing at the end of the bed, in this bus I can stand up straight. Yeah, yeah. In the other buses we were looking at, I couldn't. So yeah. I see the final piece uh, here. The fireplace looks awesome. Oh yes, yes. So you mentioned the firewood, and uh, and now I know why. So. We have a Cubic Mini, uh, Grizzly, and we heat with this. It keeps us quite comfortable. This morning I saw 42 on the thermometer outside, and it was about 72 in the house, 73 yeah, in the house, yeah. and I didn't have to burn a fire very hot or very long. So Nice. Oh, speaking of my uh, power center there, I didn't show that to you. I love this thing. Um, these are really, really convenient. So... That's a big unit. Yeah, it's a 3,000 watt inverter, converter, charger. It does everything. It's an yeah. MPPT controller, so that's the only box I have. Uh huh. It does everything. So it's connected to my batteries. It does shore power pass through. It'll do automatic generator start. It does ground switching. It takes care of all the things I need to make sure that we're good here. Yeah, uh, uh. and uh, it, it's been fantastic so far. Wonderful. And that company is Sungold Power. Okay. Yeah. It looks like a residential unit. It is. Those are predominantly designed and used in the residential market off-grid out in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. There's a lot wow. of them that are used in like New Zealand, Australia, and uh, I got it off of Amazon from yeah. Taiwan. So. Nice. Yeah, kit couldn't be beat for the price, under $1,000.
And your plans going forward? Oh, I want to do solar. I want to do big solar. I'd like to do solar for anyone who wants it. Uh, RVs, uh, anybody off-grid, uh, and eventually I'd like to do commercial solar applications. Okay. I spent about 30 years doing various things in the telecommunications industry, working for the phone company, uh, and part of my job was to do backup power. So I became very interested in doing solar power when we started looking at tiny homes and off-grid living. So... When we came here, I was able to get my solar panels here, actually in Arizona, down in Phoenix. I've got 1,020 watts on the roof, and uh, I'd love to help other people do the same. Awesome. Yeah. Well, do you have, like, a website? I am Schooly Solar on Facebook, and uh, I can be found there, for sure. Okay. And then you got that Susie B on the front of the bus. Yeah. So is that, yeah. like, something online? On Instagram, um, Hammond, um, hashtag Hammond. Uh, or at Hammond, I'm sorry, and we are hashtag Suzy B. If you search okay. for hashtag Suzy B with a Z, you'll see us there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And um, I hope to see you around at uh, the RTR or yeah. similar things. Well, it's been a pleasure uh, doing a tour with you, Chris. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome.